DQ event, go Mitch. I am getting word that we are really, really, actually, really, really ready now. So let's give it back up to Super Mario Brothers 3. All right. It looks like we're about to start the Mario 3 race. Uh, as Mitch, Stewie, and Hax are still kind of uh, doing their practice stuff, um, we'll get ready to get into it here real quick. Um, this is going to be Mario 3 100%. So they're going to see every single level in the game. Uh, people would think that that's going to have less RNG, but it actually is going to have a just slower trickle of it. So you're going to still see some cool stuff. Uh, on the couch with me, I've got Glitch Cat. Howdy. This is I am Jabba Mex. And this is Supersonic. As you all know, the players are the Haxer. Come on, guys, give it up more. We got Stewie Cartman. And of course, Mitch Flower Power. Yeah. All right, so without too much, you know, further ado, let's get into the race as soon as we get a nice countdown. Uh, why don't you guys give me a help? Let's do this. Five, four, four three, three, two, two one, one, go! Happy Mario 3. Let's go. All right, here they go, right off into 1-1. One, one. Even in 1-1, one, one, anything can go wrong. Yeah, this is a lot of P-Speed management, and it might seem like just P-Speed is just running forward, but there are so many tricks and subtle things that you're going to see these runners doing to maintain P-Speed throughout the run. Yes, and any time you lose P-Speed, the strats change drastically because there are jumps you can no longer make and uh, things that you have to wait for, uh, such as the piranha plants that Mitch just ran into. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of we're going to see the, a lot of cool strats. We're also going to see recovery strats in a big way, as things in this run might not go exactly as they plan. As one of the longer SMB3 runs, one of the biggest things is who can recover from something. So it's uh, who has the most experience in messing up and then figuring out a way to come back from it. Yeah, there can be a lot of give and take throughout. Nice P-speed main uh, maintenance from Haxor there. Yeah, great job. This is the level that everybody's used to collect, collecting a whistle for and just skipping the rest of the game, but since we're in 100%, people are going to play it slightly differently. Yeah, normally they would grab the leaf there in 1-3, but they don't need to do that because they can actually grab it in the fortress coming up in a couple levels. So everything is on the table for this run. Leafs, uh, item boxes, is that correct? It's only just 100% get everything, but you can use whatever power-ups or items you have in your box. It's 100% of the levels that you can die in. That's the way they define a level, basically. So we're not going to skip anything with the cloud. Right. Yeah, there's no importance on, like, mushroom houses, though, or anything like that. Um, they're actually going to get their leaf in this level because it doesn't take as many frames to go out of their way. Uh, they don't have to backtrack in a level that is uh, non-auto-scrolling, and the auto-scroll makes it a cheap pickup. Oh, okay. I was Haxter. actually thinking of the warpless strat there. Yeah. <laughs> it's... I like that little swag shell jumble uh, from Haxor. Yeah, we may actually see some more swag. This, uh, this level's known for a couple of fun little glitches. Uh, you can get some cool sounds and some uh, interesting visuals. Is there anything you can do to make this go faster, or do you just got to play it through? You just got to play it through. There's, uh, there's nothing really to do here. You could get every coin and get a white mushroom house, which no one will ever do, but it's cool. <laughs> so there's one of those little graphical glitches. If you uh, break a block on the screen wrap of the game, it'll stick in the spot that it's in and never go away, even though it's transparent and you can move right through it. Yeah, actions can write graphics into the background. It's weird. The castle, though, even though they skipped the whistle in the other level, will be picked up simply because it is the fastest way to end the level. Yeah, it'll just trigger once you, you don't actually have to go into the boom boom and fight it. You can just grab that whistle. But they're nope. never actually going to use that throughout the run. They just have it because it was quick here. And it will be in the first item slot of their inventory, so they're going to have to watch out for not using the whistle there. Yeah, using a whistle would be really awkward. Um, Mitch is actually going to go for his famous tunnel here. He wants everyone to get excited for it. Everyone pray for the tunnel. Um, Stewie also going for it, he said. Uh, hacks are taking the safer strat. Oh, oh, oh no like tunnels block. today. Ooh. Yeah, that can be really tough. You've got to angle yourself right down through that, and uh, if you bonk at all, you lose a little bit of time through that section. The, uh, the tunnel itself only saves a small number of frames, but it's the coolest thing. 
This level has been known to troll people because this one gap over that bridge can take away your P-Speed. Is there a trick to avoiding that? Um, in, like, in the SMW, you hold jump when you're running over one tile gaps. There is a way to build it consistently, but it's hard to, to always know that you're on it. Um, So we were talking a little bit earlier about uh, P-Speed and the fact that the game checks every handful of frames if you're on the ground. So you can sort of trick it by being in the air when it's right. not checking. And then when you're landing on the ground and it is checking, it will say, oh, you've just been running this whole time, so it'll increment your Right, or you can speed. slow down in a place where you know it's not checking and uh, keep continue going fast. All right, so we're heading into our first airship here. So if you got any donations, feel free to read them. Got you covered. We've got $15 from Ganamax, a fish. Can't wait to see my fishy friends in World 3. <laughs> Careful not to feed Big Bertha some plumber-flavored fish flakes. We've got $15 from Jacob248. I can't wait for the 100% Super Mario Bros. 3 race. Wait no longer. That game was my childhood, and I can't wait to watch them speed through the whole thing. Good luck, racers. Looks like all three of them got powered up with Fire Flower. You actually saw that they clipped underneath the block and then grabbed it right before the animation was completed for the Fire Flower to come out. Yeah, there's actually some pretty good strats to do that to save time in other levels, but in this level, because of the auto-scroll, there's no way to save time, unfortunately. Um, we will notice they all got the same boss pattern, um, which is an easy fire kill for this. So the, um, the wand grab, actually, you don't, you say, why don't you jump to grab the wand? It's actually faster because Mario falls off screen quicker at the end of that cutscene to grab the wand at the lower position. <clears throat> and this is where they're going to get their first P-Wing. Almost every item in this uh, run gets used other than the ones that are forbidden. Um, there are even some uses for the cloud to do levels out of order sometimes. Uh, that will be useful. Yeah, there's a lot of backup strats throughout this run and a lot of like plan B type of situations where things don't go according to plan, but there's a way to recover and basically functionally lose very little time. Right. Um, World 2 is not going to be terribly uh, divisive for their time, so I think we're going to see a pretty smooth World 2 for everybody. Um, World 3, though, is where we're going to see a real pickup in the uh, diversity of times just based on uh, strats that can go wrong or right. So for this 100% run, we do need to uh, defeat all the Hammer Brothers that are roaming around on the map. But there is something about the Hammer Brother movement in this map that can save time or lose time. Is that right? Right. Um, so they try to remove all the Hammer Bros before they do the last pyramid to assure a good boss pattern in the castle. Um, the boss pattern is determined by um, the uh, number of frames that you're on the overworld between the last level you do and the one that you're going into. There's a very difficult P-Speed strat in this level that everyone goes for, but uh, it doesn't look like Stewie got it there. So P-Speed maintenance out of the pipe. When you can preserve, once you go through the pipe with P-Speed, you can preserve that P-Speed on the other side of the pipe by jumping right, right after you get out. And you can only do that if you uh, get your P-Speed going in without touching the pipe, which is very difficult to conceptualize, but they're, the entrance to the pipe is actually one pixel away from the pipe. All right, you did see that, that they fought Boom Boom just a while ago. They shoot five fireballs at it rather than stopping on it three times to save time. Yes, and you want to do it as close as possible because Mario can only have two fireballs on the screen at a time. So if you're closer to him, you can shoot the fireballs faster. <clears throat> it's really interesting how all of these racers have had different bumps in the road, uh, even so far, but yet they're kind of in relatively the same position. I think it really speaks to the strength of their backup strats in some cases. Yeah, I mean, in this level, they're only frames apart in some cases, and uh, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, some alternate strats for that level in particular that nobody went for, but it's, it, there's yeah. a lot of different ways to do this game the right way, and it's, it's really cool. Yeah. Yes. It's interesting when they, they're trying to not get three of the same card from that slot box at the end there, because they if you got three of the same, it would trigger a fanfare that gives you a lot of one-ups and waste a ton of time. Right, especially the star. The star one is more fanfare than anything, and it, it takes up a lot of time. If these guys need five they did lives, it every time. <laughs> that's the bad news. I mean, yeah, I mean, five one-ups is nice, but don't want to 
wait through that cutscene. Yeah, this uh, this run doesn't have a lot of like suicide strats or anything, so the lives don't really go to anything beneficial, which, you know, they could, but in this one, they're not going to. Um, that was a very nice piece speed build. Yeah, that's kind of what we're everybody. talking about with the, um, where it checks if you're on the ground, so they jump in and move in really strategic ways. It looks like they're right. just moving forward, but actually a lot of those jumps are really heavily controlled so that they're mm -hmm. on the ground when they want to be, and they're in the air when the game's not checking if they're running. Right, you want to keep your feet to the ground for the most part. Uh, Mario can really only get good acceleration when he's on the ground for P-Speed purposes. Um, it's one thing that's just amazing about this run. There's so much subtlety Ooh. to P-Speed preservation and maintenance that it gets really, really tech heavy. Okay, we are seeing a route divergence here. So Haxer is actually in the pyramid level right now while Stewie is in 2-4. Yeah, the, uh, the Hammer Bro can do some pretty trolly things to you in World 2. Uh, if it crosses over a level that you're not expecting it to, uh, it makes it so that even though you have some weird pathing you'll have to do, um, for the third hammer bro beyond the rock, you're still coming out better to just go ahead and do the pyramid. But they want to make sure that they move correctly into the castle at the end to save those, um, save those frames and get a consistent boss pattern. Right. Um. Not picking up the frog suit from the, uh, from the... You know, it just doesn't help as much as you think. I know some big fans of the frog suit are out there. But it but looks cool. It is the coolest. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, shout out to the frog suit fans. <laughs> They're always the best. Cartman is in the pyramid, which is a kind of run killer for a lot of people. Not because it's terribly killing, but it's very easy to lose a lot of time in that level, and it's early in the game. Yeah, getting those shells to break the blocks and then sliding that duck slide underneath that one tile gap can be uh, a big source of gain or loss. Yeah, a lot of good tech that uh, just requires good reaction speed and um, fast movement. But we got everybody in the World 2 airship now. Uh, everyone's really close. This is uh, a lot closer than I was expecting, but it's pretty, um, pretty good. Um, is there any lag reduction? I know in like the World 8 airships, you want to destroy the bombs and things to reduce lag a little bit. Is that happening here at all, or there's not enough sprites to create lag? Well, there's not a lot of lag to reduce in this particular airship. Um, there's some in others, but not this one. Um, this is probably a good time for more donations, since everybody's in the airship all at once. Absolutely. We've got $20 from Gadian. Had to donate during the SMB3 100% race. Good luck to the racers. Let's get those clips and help prevent cancer. Thanks, Gaddian. $10 from TinaHacks191, who says, Hey, friends, Tina here. Am I in time for the 100% all coin ships race? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> now, a coin ship could happen, technically. Um, if they have to keep a good track of their coin count and their score, for the entire game. They don't want any 77s or 88s, any multiple of 11, along with a, uh, a score total that, in combination, would cause one of the normal Hammer Bros to become a coin ship, which is a terrible auto-scroller that costs a lot of time. Isn't it that if, the, if your coins are a multiple of 11 and the tens digit of your score is that same value? So if you have 11 coins and the tens digit is one, is that, that's how that works, right? Right. That and it only works in worlds one, three, five, and six? Yes. Right? The levels, yeah, with um, Hammer Bros. It's a nice, peaceful level in the water. Sea creatures. Before the, uh, the troublesome world three levels start. It really isn't worth it to pick up the frog suit and do this just a little bit faster. It seems like they're, they're really slowing down, but I guess the mushroom house would. Getting P-Speed on top of that area in the middle is a really big time save and just jumping. The frog suit just can never get that fast. Someday it will. <laughs> we believe in you, frog suit. <laughs> the frog's been training. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a pretty difficult P-Speed strat in this level. Yes. Uh, they are just foregoing riding on that line platform and instead just getting P-Speed and bouncing off these fish with a really cool combo. Yeah, and these fish aren't exactly in the same spot every time. There's a small reaction you have to pull off if they're in a little bit of a deviation. And just fireballing that last piranha plant is very difficult. Yeah. You know, fun fact about that uh, 
ground platform on the line is it doesn't count as ground, so if you were to only stand on that platform and bounce on the fish, you would eventually get a one-up, even though you touched the ground. Everybody got cool. that. That's, that's awesome. Every Good. single one of them. Very difficult strat. Great job, guys. This is another one that's it's a lot of really interesting platforming. There's a lot of different things that can go wrong here. The windmills can just take away all your speed. And uh, the places that you can land are just narrow and moving. This is really, really great. I'm just like watching. Yeah. Just it's enthralled with this. Mario 3 is one of the best speed games because of how fast things move. Everyone's just going at such lightning speed the whole game. P-Speed in this game is different than Mario World. It's, it's a real rocket taking off. Uh, so no, no attempt on the door, uh, the door trick where you get that one frame door entry. I don't know if they were going to go for that or not. It looks like uh, Haxor and Mitch both just went the safe way. No one really likes to do the door three trick, <laughs> but it's, it's one of my favorite tricks. I love it. I saw this guy get it once. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so oh. Still, we did it! Got it. <laughs> that the madman really man did it! <laughs> that was fantastic. Beautiful. And that's what I mean with these backup strats, that there's always, if you mess something up, you could save it in another place. And so you really have to have, you have to be actively thinking about your route and where you're at this whole time. There's a lot of yep. just, it's not just memorization and execution, there's a lot of like thought that goes into running it while you're doing it. It's also a way to, for racers to always have hope. Because there's always like the, the dangerous strat that you know nobody else is gonna do. All right, now you can see uh, they're in 3-5. They've switched to the P-Wing because it's actually faster to just, to just fly above the stage rather than going into the water because it's actually a lot slower to swim. Yeah, there's actually some really cool P-Speed uh, swim strats that make it a little faster, but they've only put that into the task. Does having P-Speed make you swim faster? Is that a... Can you manipulate There, there are ways that? to make it go into the water and do quick movements for little bits of time. This is a nice, peaceful level as well. It's, uh... <laughs> I like how Lakitu can never catch them. Yeah. They're just running too fast. He throws the spinies, but they're already way behind. It's... Lakitu was such a uh, troll when you're playing this casually as a kid. And he tries his best. Here, he's just kind of there. <laughs> this uh, this auto-scroll here is, uh, is one of the levels that people would skip in Warpless at all costs. Uh, Anytime the hammer bro crosses over this level, it's a huge pain. But in this, they're gonna have to do it anyways. So they're gonna do like a, the 1-4, and they're just gonna have some fun here and try to make glitched, as many glitched sprites as they can. I like the green, green donut, donut block there. Yeah. yeah, they're just gonna have fun. If you got any donations, feel free to read them. I do indeed. We've got... $25 from Earthmelon, who says, best of luck to the Razors. Shout out to GlitchCat7. Woohoo! I think I'm the one person up here that doesn't run this game. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got, well, that's why you need the shout outs. $5 from Ceaselessly, who says, choo choo, let's get a Super Mario Brothers 3 $5 train going. Dear runners, stay hype and stay hydrated. It's a good thing we got that. We don't have stay hydrated bot to remind us. No chat here. There's actually a dangerous strat you can do to get around that windmill that Stewie chose not to go for, but uh, the windmills can be, are, is a very big obstacle in that level. Getting through 3-7 pretty smoothly by keeping peace be the entire way. Yeah, those clouds are meant to be gotten to with a vine, but everybody here is, uh, is just gonna kind of reject the idea of using those, and they're just gonna get up there their own way. An underground, underwater um, fortress here. If you just noticed on Mitch's screen, he did the super swim. If you, uh, if you have your body half in water and half out of water, and then you duck into the water, you get this super fast swim, which he did to get to the pipe at the very beginning. That pretty much like cuts your hitbox in half when you crouch like that, right? Like when you're going into the water, it treats it like you're small in a way. Right, and it also just speeds you up really bizarrely high for a water section. This is our a level with Boss Bass, everyone's favorite enemy in Mario 3 with the potential to eat you whole. 
<laughs> the nice thing about boss pass is that if you move the same way, boss pass is pretty much always going to act the same way because it is kind of trying to target and chase you, so it's not necessarily random. He does have a bit of the Lakitu effect where he's, uh, for the speedrunners, <laughs> he's in the same spots all the time and they're just kind of running around him. But he's still pretty threatening if you get off your uh, normal route at all. Oh, it's Stewie Cartman just throwing that grab block to kill Boss Pass. You can do that. He comes back, but you can kill him. Right. Boss Pass is immortal. Uh, he is always resurrected. Got the H jump from Haxer. The H jump is su surprisingly difficult to pull off, and everybody is always excited when they get their H. And notice Haxor bringing one of those uh, lit up grab blocks with him through the pipe in order to kill a fish that was going to be there. And, uh, looks like the Haxer is the first one to make it to the airship. The Haxer with a little bit of a lead right now. Yeah, pretty good. Got me. Yeah, clever Mitch that. coming in next with the Mitch airship. is coming in. He's in the same screen, so it's anybody's game still, but... It's uh, definitely a small lead for Haxer right now. Stewie's not too far behind, though. He's, uh, he's not even a level behind. There's a lot of things coming up in the late game, too, that can sort of be a make it or break it, YOLO sort of strat. Right, still a little bit of RNG and some big worlds. Uh, world 7 is going to be huge. Yeah, World 7. Um, world 6, I, I talked to everybody before this, and everybody said that World 6 is going to be something to keep an eye on, because there's a lot that can go on there. Yeah, and we are going to show off those new uh, subpixel strats, too, that were mentioned in the interview. Right, lots of really cool stuff has come up lately with just uh, manipulating the mechanics of this game that nobody really thought about before. Um, but we are in an airship, and I think it's probably another good time for a few donations. Sure thing. We've got $50 from Diesel Pilot. For the first time since I've watched GDQ events, I'm in a financial position to be able to donate. I wanted to donate during the event of the person whose runs got me watching them in the first place. Good luck to Mitch Flower Power and all the runners. Save the frames, stop cancer. $25 from GamerDad50, who says, my five-year-old twins are putting this money towards a, the Haxer victory today. <laughs> Oof. Throwing hey, guys, come on, cheer for that. <laughs> <laughs> and $10 from Glitch the Gamer, donating 10 bucks for that amazing door three trick. Worth that it. was definitely worthy of that. Yeah, that was awesome. Everybody took down Wendy with no problem. Wendy is the absolute terror of randomizer, but here we've got a nice consistent strat with fire on a flat plane. She doesn't shake the room. And again, that's a result of taking a consistent amount of frames to get into that castle on the map. Is that correct? That they know they're going to get a good pattern because they did it that way. Right. They're coming from the fort, which is always the same. Okay, we are going to see some various P-Speed strats in 4-1 here. 4-1 has some dangerous strats, and but they, a lot of people will just pick up a shell and use it as a shield so that they can do something very safe. Um, but we see, get to see both here because Haxer and Mitch have both done different strats, and now we'll see how Stewie does it. Yeah, you can do a little, doing turnbacks, when you have P-Speed, if you want to do like a little left, right, or a little turn back, it can be really easy to lose your P-Speed in that moment. So bringing a shell acts like a, like a shield, and you can just run straight through instead of having to do a little left, right to avoid it. Right. And uh, if you look at Mitch, he was uh, using that throw block, which might have looked like it was like a shield, but that's actually to create a despawn. You'll see that uh, Hacks are actually put the Hammer Bros to sleep. Um, and that's just so that he can do a few levels where the Hammer Bros won't be doing the movements after the levels, which will just cut down on a little bit of time. I didn't think his gameplay was that boring. <laughs> <laughs> he was to the Hammer Bros. <laughs> They're skipping. He's skipping them for now. Arguably, a lot of people's favorite stage is 4-3 because of the peace speed chat that you do in the stage is really cool. Yeah, it's just a lot of fun to just zip around through that and all the little tight nooks, bouncing your head off ceilings and just back, getting it where you need to go super fast. Yeah, the favorable levels for the speedrunner are ones that start out with enough of a runway to just get P-Speed right away. 
and then it gets more challenging later in areas that don't have a large runway to be able to build up P-Speed early in the level instead of just right at the end. Haxer is in 4-1, which is considered the hardest level to do correctly in the game. He used a star to make it a little easier, like Mitch is doing right now, but he did it perfectly. And uh, we'll see Mitch, he, uh, he rubbed a wall, but otherwise perfect. Yeah. Uh, and that's very difficult for all the runners. Everyone usually dreads this level. Yeah, abusing the corner. Oh, Stu got it too. Nice job. Abusing the corner of that thwomp where you can kind of jump right through the edge of it um, and kind of graze against the image of the thwomp but not actually touch the hitbox. Right, it's a terrifying jump, but it's, uh, it's really cool when you get it. Mitch got the P-Speed up in the ceiling there in 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, going off the Lakitu to get up on that top wall there where you're not supposed to get. And then the crouch off that one pillar into the water again like we Ooh. Mitch Ooh. almost got a crown. <laughs> not the kind he wants, though. It's a... Uh... So this route only relies on power-ups, uh, like item boxes, that are actually either given by the princess in the letters at the end or picked up from the Hammer Brothers, that they're never going to actually go to a mushroom house right. to get anything, and they can just use everything they've got. Yeah, they, the uh, mushroom houses wouldn't produce anything that could save a whole lot of time. Um, almost everything they need is in the levels, but there are some backup strats that can be used um, to use like the mushroom house that gives the hammer, for instance. Some people can get that as some insurance for getting a fast Bowser Castle at the end of the game. These are in, this is another one of the hardest levels to get P-Speed in the game. The, uh, the bottom level in World 4 here. Yeah, it's where, this is like we were talking about before, where the game only checks every handful of frames if you're running. So if you plan your jumps to be in those times when the game isn't checking, you just won't lose anything and it won't decrement. You could get P-Speed that way, but yeah, we, it's uh, very, very difficult. We see that neither, none of the players actually got that P-Speed strat. I think um, there was like four frame perfect jumps to get that, or it's like a very... It's a very like, small a higher handful. Higher number than one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very small handful of frames and uh, pixels that work. This board also has some pretty cool early P-Speed strats, but... We see uh, Mitch and Haxer both did this very well. Uh, very hard for new runners to do that sort of thing. Do we have in a little trouble with uh, stairs? Yeah, stairs are pretty difficult to get. Don't we all? Time, so. Everyone, everyone hates stairs in Mario games. All right, so we're heading into the World Four airship, which moves at a blistering 15 pixels per second. It's the absolute slowest level in the game, despite being incredibly short distance-wise. So now is a good time to read some donations. Yes, sir. We've got twenty dollars twenty cents from the Sticky Stick Man. Here's to the first Mario run of the new decade. If whoever is in the lead when the announcer reads this wins, I'll donate an extra ten dollars. Congrats to GDQ and all its staff on an amazing decade. Haxer has a new router. We've also got $5.50 from 50% Gaming. Fantastic people on the couch and an all-star cast running. Much love to the NES Mario community. I have my money on the Haxter, so don't let me down. Let's go. Wow. wow. <laughs> people, no are pressure. Getting, people are getting really hyped for the Haxter today. Yeah. Yeah, you can cheer you can yeah, for that. Like that. <laughs> $10 from Geek and Decay. Loving the SMB3 race. What do we have in the frog suit 100% race as a donation incentive? Best of luck to all the runners. I would do that. Yeah, I like that. I would. Sounds fun. Love the frog. I'm casting my vote for that right now. <laughs> $50 from Hope and Caleb. Hi, AGDQ. Happy 10th anniversary. We're staying up late to watch the SMB3 race, but if you can read our donation before our bedtime, then our dad promises to match our donation. Keep up the great work. We got time for this one. So here it is. Sandalfon, $225, says, Swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go. Do the Mario. Take one step 
And then again, let's do the Mario all together now. <laughs> Just like that. I wish I could remember the second half of that song. Always. There was a second half. I don't remember the second half. <laughs> Everything has a second half. <laughs> Last verse thing is the first. <laughs> All right, so we did see that Haxer did lose the Fire Flower on the fight. So I think the next uh, Fire Flower, you don't get until like 5-7, I believe? It's, it's a long time journey for between now and the Fire Flower that he's going to pick up. Um, so what kind of backup strats is Haxor going to be looking for as he moves into World 5? The comfort comfortable cloud world where nothing bad can ever happen because there's too many nice comfy clouds. There is also another Fire Flower in 5-2 that he can pick up. Um, it's in a not so great place to pick up, but I have seen people go for that one before. Um, so it's just going to depend on what he, what he wants to pick up. Um, other than that, uh, there's... Nothing in the f almost every fort uses fire flowers except for this one, so it's not a great place to pick it up here. Um, after that, you'd have to get to five seven, I believe, to, to get the next one. So, using this little dev intended shortcut here, uh, instead of falling all the way down through that, you uh, just go and go around this little shortcut, right? This is low. there slope speed in this when they're, they're sliding on the slope, and then if you neutral the d pad. Do you go, you go faster, you preserve that slow momentum. Is that, that's how it works in Mario World. Is that how it works here? If you hold down and you jump, you actually have the fastest speed in the game. The fastest speed you can attain is sliding. And when you jump, it will preserve that, even if you start holding forward after you jump. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. And if you do frame-perfect jumps, you can keep that speed even after you land for a little bit. OK, so just be task. Yeah. You can see those like little flutter steps um, after they do the the bouncing from the slides, and that means they've kept at least a lot of that speed. Uh, you lose it slowly the n number of frames that you run across the ground. A really nice clear from Mitch on that fort. Uh, the strat right at the beginning where he just falls right onto that one block right by the lava. The first time he did that, I'm like, oh, you died. Oh, wait, no, he's fine. That was actually a great improv strat from Haxer uh, to use a star in this level because the normal way to do it is with the fire flower and he doesn't have Fire Flower. So he knew that the only way that he was going to be able to do this comfortably was to use a star at the beginning, which is going to take it away later. But some of the stars that you use in later levels are really just more comfort stars. They just make the level more comfortable. Yeah, that's that improvisation coming back in that you always have to be aware of where you're at and what you might have to do later in order to back yourself up. And I had entirely forgotten that there was a Fire Flower in this I level. I forgot about that. <laughs> you always just go past it. That's, that's why we're on the cage. Yeah. They are playing the cage. <laughs> Good to know that there's a fire flower there for backups. And today I learned something. One of the most comfortable forts to go through. It's nice and uh, just kind of fun to do jumps. It's through the waffles and over the thwomps. Those death waffles, though. <laughs> the only eat, time. Eat one. The only game where people don't want waffles. So the Spiral Palace here, um, it, what, Mitch, yeah, no, yeah, Mitch is in the Spiral Palace right now. That actually doesn't count as an exit, does it? So if, if it weren't necessary to play this for 100%, you actually wouldn't have to, is that correct? Right, um, this is a, it, it depends on how you interpret, I guess, level you can die in, but this is technically coded as a pipe, a pipe transition, like you get in the overworld and other places. actually kept the P-Speed throughout that entire section. Keeping P-Speed in the Twisty Castle is quite difficult, and it's a uh, it's real badge of honor to keep it the whole way through. Um, you don't lose much time if you lose it. Oh, that was super cool. Stewie got the red pipe. The Sunday wow. sequence break. <laughs> yeah, you should have totally clapped for that. That was amazing. And That's it was cool. totally for swag, too, and didn't save time. <laughs> I've actually never seen that done before, but yeah, you can clip into the, a vertical pipe, you can clip into the edge of it and press down, and you can, like, it acts like you're going into a downward pipe. It's the same way the wrong warp in 7-1 works. Right. Most people have probably seen it in that instance, and, but there's no special trick for it here. It doesn't do any uh, code rewriting. These are some of the levels that people dread the P-Speed build in the most. It's uh, not necessarily a level you're afraid to die in, the ones with these donut blocks at the bottom, but it's very easy to not get P-Speed and have to do a backup strat here. 
A really nice run for Hacks. We're getting all the way through that with Peace Speed. That was amazing. Yep, that was a great job. <clears throat> Buzzy Beetle Auto Scroller. Um, Auto everyone, Scroller, what a surprise! Everyone's favorite. It's uh, what we all came here for. <laughs> A lot of notebook or uh, music boxes in uh, Hammer Bros, which unfortunately are almost totally useless in this game. This is the only level in the game with these little beetles that descend, right? Except for that one level on the back of the box that wasn't real. Um, the back of the SMB3 box had a featured a level that had Buzzy Beetles in it that's not actually in the game. To be honest, I never thought about it, but I, I don't, I can't think of any that have them in there now. <laughs> I know they've been uh, used extensively in ROM hacks recently. They can do some interesting things with uh, ceiling clips and stuff. So I've heard <laughs> that Stewie is going for the Jesus clip. For those of you who don't know, that's a extremely difficult fork clip that has a chance to really mess up your uh, your progression because you have to get a, if you fail, you do die and you have to recollect all of your power-ups in different stages. And as we saw from Haxer, just getting back one power-up can be difficult and this would be two. But he's gonna go for it and if he does, he's gonna save a nice little chunk of time. Yeah, haxer has been recovering really nicely by picking up that other Fireflop, but it did kind of give Mitch just a little bit of a lead, and now it's it's Flip-Flop, where Haxor was in Mitch's place. Yeah, they're uh, reverse. They're about exactly as far apart as they were before, it's just a different person. <laughs> so now we are actually seeing the Fortress being played intended. Mm -hmm. so, uh... And this, uh, this fort's a little awkward, too, because the ceiling there, it's not just a, a ceiling or, you know, a place where you go off screen like most Mario, you can go into lava up there. That's a lava ceiling. I kind of wonder whose Bowser's like carpenter or, or you know, <laughs> Here like he goes. builder was. Oh. oh, no. I was so hoping for it. That was a good try, good though. Try. Good try. He's, He's just going to use a mushroom house. He's going to get his power back. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the way clipping in this game works. You can crouch. And with a proper subpixel, uh, you can shove your feet basically into the seam between two boxes and then stand up. It just like stop crouching. And then the game thinks, oh, you're just standing up in the wall, so it just pushes you through. And all the clips kind of function on that principle. Yeah, Mario 3 tried to put in the most fail proof, save the player method possible. And anytime you're stuck in a wall, it just shoots you right. No matter what kind of clip it is, no matter what happens, it's just gonna push the player right until they're free. And uh, you're basically tricking the game into thinking that you are stuck in a full wall, but really it's just your subpixels are barely in there. And that's why setting up a favorable subpixel for this new strategy that we're gonna see soon, that's why that's so important. Right. Because it produces a reliable clip setup where before you just sort of had to guess uh, whether or not you had the favorable subpixel. Yeah, before we were just mashing our forehead into walls and hoping. And uh, now there's a science to it. We do it with a little more grace and finesse. <laughs> Artistically mashing your head. <laughs> yeah. And it still only makes it closer because you can still miss your pixel or something. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's only giving you the first try. You won't have a luck factor. Well, what's exciting is that with this discovery, there's the potential that there are a lot of other subpixel setups, which would make other clips in this run way more viable if they could be found. Right. We even just toyed around with some in the practice room. And we thought of some pretty cool new ways to do other levels. So we still haven't seen the full potential of Mario 3. Surprisingly, after all this time, it's just going to keep getting better. People are always lowering the, the chances which give better runs, and they're improving the strategies and getting better P-speeds. All right, since we're pretty much in auto-scroller land here, you can feel free to read some donations. Absolutely. Uh, we've got $5 from, pay or $50 from Payout Pops. Thanks, AGDQ. This is Hope and Caleb's Pops matching their donation as promised. Thanks for reading their comment. It made their night. Save the frames and keep making a difference. Woo. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Dad. $50 from Bobby132. Super Mario Brothers 3 is the greatest game. 
let me hear an it's a me, Mario, from the crowd. I hope you guys heard that. It's a them, Mario. It was them. <laughs> Speaking of things I want to hear, I want to hear some donations towards the Zelda Skyward Sword file name, which is closing very soon. Uh, right now, it's between honk and lonk. <laughs> About $600 difference between the two. So get those donations in. You guys can win. All right. Haxer and Mitch in the same room as we've seen them before. It's, uh, it's still a really tight race, but here is that World 6 that they were talking about that they were both worried about. They were both saying that this is where things could go wrong the most. Not necessarily that levels have high killing potential, but that these are very difficult to optimize levels. Yeah, one thing I just learned today, um, not only the fact that those little plants, uh, the piranha plants with the little spike ball, they're called patui plants, which I never knew, but they're actually on a global cycle. So small differences uh, can completely change the way they act and uh, might have to force the players to improvise a little bit. Right, most things work on a spawn when you get close enough to them system, but if they are on that global timer, then even if you fix your setup halfway through the level, you'll get there and those things won't be doing the same thing they normally do, uh, which is very dangerous for a speed run. Yeah, especially if you want it to be in the up or down position, and that really matters. Right. Mitch showing off that really fast mashing speed that he has. I don't know how he mashes that fast. It's really he uses amazing. two hands. <laughs> that's, that's the secret. It looks like a ricochet going in rapid speed. Oof. Ooh, that's gonna hurt. Stewie lost his fire in 6 1. Where's the next recovery point? Uh, I believe that you can get a Fire Flower in the level that Mitch and Hax are in, which would be hope helpful because that's an auto-scroll. But uh, there's other places where they're going to use P-Wings anyways, um, because this world has a bunch of places where flight is going to be great help to them. And when you do that, it erases the, the downside of losing power-ups in other levels anyways. Gonna be like a uh, damage boost strat coming up pretty soon. Like even if he got another power up, like Stewie. Right. Yeah. Like I was saying, they're gonna they're gonna use P wings, so they have pretty much two damage boosts that they could theoretically use to go faster. Uh -huh. And uh, he's just gonna take a leaf. It looks like, um, which is perfectly valid. It loses time in a lot of levels because there's a small drag with the leaf suit. Um, every time you jump with it, but on an auto-scroller, you can't really lose that time anyways. And uh, There's that damage boost strap from Mitch going through yep. those spikes and taking two hits to outrun that platform that he was on and let him get a little bit faster through there. Nice. And then keeping the star in for Boom Boom, can he make it? Yep. yep. Nice. Or, yeah, that's a one-hit kill. And it produces the uh, very ever-elusive upside-down question orb. Yeah, if you overkill Boom Boom with too many frames, then he gets, his box appears in the middle, and it actually is way faster than waiting for Boom Boom to die the normal way. It's like one frame per hit, basically. Yeah, one, every frame you're hitting him. So if you're standing over top of him for point, like, three seconds here, you destroy him. Um, having a little trouble with P-Speed strat in this level, Haxer is... A little weird little Yoda thing I did there. I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> Still managed to get through it just fine. Is P-Speed the same? Um, does it work the same on ice? Does, does running on ice actually matter or slow you down or make it harder to generate? So the ice shouldn't matter except for the acceleration from the ground. At the very start, when you're trying to move on the ice, it's going to be slow. But once you get P-Speed, it's all the same, uh, unless you try to stop in which case you will be disappointed in how quickly you come to an end. Uh, Stewie also gets the overflow Stewie. kill. Um, Mitch is in one of the most difficult levels right now to do quickly, um, and he got through no problem. You have to do it small based on what's uh, going on in the other levels, and th that is just not a easy swim path. Uh, here goes Haxer doing the same thing, doing a great job. 
you ran straight into the water. If you run into the water, you go in super fast instead of jumping into the water, which can only be done in a few levels. Wow, and Haxor even got the despawn on the plant that moves downward. That was an excellent swim. All right, so on Mitch's screen, he put on the P-Wing for this stage. He's going to go for a despawn on the Nipper, which looks like he did mess up a little bit. So he has to use the backup strat of getting the Koopa Shell. This is a very peculiar little uh, despawn. He, uh, he landed on the hill too low, and that's uh, how he knew that he was going to need to pick up that shell. It's very... Uh, very specific. Yeah, I'm really impressed that Mitch can just figure that out in the moment and knew, you know, he knew exactly what to do. There was no hesitation. He saw something messed up and he just did the backup strat. That's how, that's more or less how you're supposed to do it. Like the devs intend you to fly up with the shell and then kill those two nippers, but you could despawn the one on the right and just be able to get through without bringing the shell. Right. We'll see if, uh, if Stewie does the, uh, the fast strat, which is to despawn one or two. There are different despawn strats that uh, you can use there. And uh, now he's back to full. He's right with everybody else. He's uh, one level behind, and he's got a chance at some catch up here, it looks like. Yeah, I love how dynamic the race has been. It's been so close all the time, and like any one little mistake. Stewie gets hey, he gets the nice despawn. Job. Great job, Stewie. He gets all the hard stuff. Scrollers, feel free to read some donations. Absolutely. Five dollars from Lackadaisical. Choo choo. Five dollar donation train hype. Choo choo. Here comes the train again. Bryce and Robot gives twenty-five dollars. I heard there was a five dollar donation train coming. I'd like five tickets, please. Choo choo. <laughs> that train is coming. Yeah. Glad about that. Its choos are changing though. <laughs> We're gonna see Mitch in the ice wings here. Bit of a slip up, but he's gonna go for a P speed. Yeah, that's a very difficult P speed build. Take damage attack. They intention. take that on purpose. It's okay, guys. That's in Don't fret, it's okay. <laughs> he's fine. Thanks for covering the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like they don't necessarily need the leaf in a lot of these stages. Again, the leaf, in fact, slows you down in a lot of ways. Um, it makes it very difficult to do certain jumps, especially if you have, you have very good muscle memory for your P-Speed strat. So a lot of times people lose it as soon as possible. Big H. H. A little bit of lag reduction, too, from Mitch in this level, actually using that grab lock, too. And you see Haxor doing it as well to kill a couple of those nipper plants to reduce a little bit of lag as they run through. Reduces a bit of lag, creates a better runway for making that initial P-Speed build. It's a... Uh, Important. And they're going to P-Wing over this stage. In other formats of the game, you'll see people trying to wall jump over it. But uh, they're going to take the, the easy road here and just P-Wing over it. They've what got the stage? biggest... <laughs> <laughs> They've got their biggest inventory category, so they can uh, reach deep for P-Wings whenever they need them. This is one of the coolest strategies in the game. That This... Uh, white block pickup is uh, really cool. Trying to maintain the P-Speed while going left and right is nearly impossible for yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of that. You see Haxor doing it too. Oh, he got it! Yeah, he got it first Haxor try. That was it. incredible. Wow. Yeah, a lot of that movement um, is to maintain your P-Speed and be like swooping left and right so you can contact the ground enough to maintain that while you're waiting for that um, grabby individual <laughs> to It's a base play block. throw block. I think it's coded as like an ice block, but I, I never understood that name. There is actually a clip you can go for in the fortress that'll take you directly to Boom Boom's room. Yeah, it was actually in the world record for years. Like people actually grinded and waited. I guess they weren't waiting for it, but they, they kept getting it for some reason. But it's one of the hardest in the game to get. And if you miss it, you fall into spikes. So it's kind of incredible that that even happened historically. Yeah, I love how the, the historically the, the record for this has changed hands. But not only that, it's not just been people beating the same record with the same strats, but in 
what's the word I'm looking for? Innovating and, and finding new strats and finding new ways to just cut things out. Ooh, Stewie taking the first death of the night, I believe. You got this, Stewie. Yeah. I yeah. You got this. Thanks, guys. <laughs> The Paragoomba there, just, was that a Paragoomba or was it a Paracoopa? I didn't see that. Oh, it was a Paracoopa. Yeah, I just didn't want to stay on screen for him. <laughs> yeah, it, it can be tough. Uh, they go really high and really low, and it's easy to think they're just going to come back up, but they're, they just want to keep going down. <laughs> yeah, so this, uh, this ship that Haxor and Mitch are in right now, here comes the sub-pixel setup that we were talking about during right. the interview, correct? So they're, yeah, you can, yeah, go ahead, you know better than me. Sure. Um, at the end of this level, they figured out a way to get the perfect sub-pixel for 7-1, where if they, at the end of the stage, they come to a stop and they go right one pixel, that wraps their sub-pixel to a low number. And that low number is what they're gonna need in 7-1 to give them a good first try at the clip. Yeah. yeah clips in this game essentially are three parts. You need a favorable sub-pixel to shove yourself into the wall, mm -hmm. you need the right pixel landing to hit the seam, and then you need the good timing to get it correct. Right. And you actually have to maintain the duck. Yeah. So there's the movement. I just saw Haxor do it. Uh, the little little tiny walk animation, and that hopefully uh, will set up the sub-pixel. Hopefully it was one pixel. I can't believe, look at, I mean, they're so close right now. <laughs> I'm just, I'm loving the race. It's, it's like low key, like a really hot race right now. I'm hoping they'll get yeah. first try at this clip coming up. Yeah, I hear I, that. I think I heard Mitch just say, why has it come down to this? <laughs> <laughs> so here it is. Yeah, we're going to see the attempt at the 7-1 clip. Ooh, unfortunate. Oh, oh Haxor no. didn't get the duck. So here it is. It's Haxor and Mitch. Who's going to get the clip first? Oh, oh there he goes. Mitch is in the wall. And oh, my. And there's Haxor. Almost the exact same amount of time in the level. Exact. Sort. And they both did it differently, too, because Mitch was crouching into the wall while Haxor was basically doing a jump stand. Yeah, both clips are, are ways to clip have about the same chance of working. Uh, some people just like standing and some people like ducking. Um, Mitch going for the safer strat here, although we've come up with a really cool new fast strat for 7-2 here. Yeah, it all, it all hinges on how you get P-Speed, and they, you see they spend a little bit of time at the beginning running to the right and left, and that's to build the P-Speed, and it does make the rest of the level faster, but if you could just generate P-Speed on your way to the right, you would save having to do that run around, and that's the right. new strat that's been worked on. All right, so now Stewie's going to approach 7-1 as well. We'll see if he can get it first try. See if Stewie can manipulate his pixels. You got this, Stewie! <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I think we got a new crowd favorite. <laughs> new? He was always loved. Return it. <laughs> so everyone's gotten quiet for this. We're all really interested. Here we go. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Oh, uh -huh. This is a big one. Seven five or er, yeah, seven five here is a very interesting and technical stage. We've got a lot of uh, slides under blocks and use of P-wing mechanics. Very easy to lose lots of time. Great job, Steve. Nice. Yeah, this level that Mitch and Haxor are on right now is um, like such a non-linear type of level. I mean, you're kind of running straight for a while, but you're going up the pipes, down the pipes. And uh, in a game like SMB3, where P-Speed preservation is, is king of speed strats, it, um, it really makes a challenge for the runners to try to get through it as fast as they can. And it's in tight quarters with a P-Wing, which is uh, not how people are used to moving. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's, it's a nightmare. I want to point out that little strat that Haxor did. Um, you're supposed to go down below. When he jumped over that gap and flew over there with the P-Wing, you're actually supposed to go down and build yourself a little bridge. Mm -hmm. But by doing it that way and having the P-Speed, he was able to just fly across that gap and just saved him a lot of routing. Right. If you didn't have a P-Wing there, you would actually try to make the first block there and clip through. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, that's the only other way to go fast. So now we're seeing the dreaded auto-scroller in a water section. <laughs> oh. Oof. 
a damage for Mitch, losing losing the leaf on the boss pass. There are some or places. Was that intentional? There are some places where those siege creatures can spawn that are just not helpful, and it's it's very easy to get hit here. Um, it looks like Haxer is getting uh, pretty good luck here, but Mitch got got bit. Yeah, this is a really rough Ooh, level. But here, he's, this doesn't look like a great fish, but he'll he'll get around it. What determines the spawn position of the boss pass? Is it just random or... Because it seems like an auto scroll. It seems like everything would load consistently. You would think. I don't actually know what changes boss passes uh, load there. I know that these uh, these little... Uh, what are they? Black spikes. Bloopers. The bloopers. They're yeah. also uh, pretty, pretty wily. It's an enigma wrapped in a mystery. Yeah. A little bit of lag reduction, um, killing those fish and making sure there's not a lot of sprites on screen. Is is, is that lag reduction? I think they actually caused lag like there by accident. Lag, yeah. <laughs> the falling fish, uh, <laughs> they only cause the lag when they are falling like that, I believe. Oh my goodness, he just threaded a, an incredible needle there. That was great nimbility on Haxer's part. So we are going to have to play, because um, this is 100%, we're going to have to play these little muncher mini games, I guess they are, little mini levels. Yeah, they count kind of like Hammer Bros, but they can't turn into coin chips as far as I know. Um, they pull you into the level instantly, and they're just short little ways to get items for most of us. Yeah, using a star to get through that as opposed to try to time out all those jumps. And Mitch is actually going to use his P-Wing in this level um, and cloud over the fort. And this is a good way to save a P-Wing because with a leaf, you can go up to the pipe in the next level um, without having to go around and pick up the item in the roundabout way that the fort tries to get you to. But he also uses the P-Wing for that level that he was in. And that was an incredible piece of speed build. It's very difficult to do. Yeah, getting that jump off of that one tile there was really, really precise. With a, again, with a leaf suit that most people are not as, uh, as comfortable doing precise jumps with. There's so much nuance in this run. I think it's one of my favorite speed games because of that. There's just endless amounts of nuance and backup strats. Endless nuance, endless backup strats, and uh, enough RNG that, you know, you really do have to grind it to get what you, the, uh, the run that you're really capable of. So this is another level that Mitch is on right now in the lower left, um, with the global cycles, uh, that patui plant there, and these little white uh, nipper plants that'll jump or shoot fire, and uh, he wants to kind of ensure that he has a good, ooh, ooh, ooh. good cycle at the end. Getting through, though. <laughs> the yeah. hacks are opting for the hammer suit in this. That's a little bit of a route change because you can go in this little bonus area and get the hammer suit. Is that for the fort? Uh, when you're getting a hammer suit, you're really saying, I want to save all of my time in the boss fights. Um, he's now committed to keeping this hammer suit all the way through the Bowser in order to save time. Yeah, because it cost him a little bit of extra time to go and pick it up in the first place. Right, and it also means that he cannot use a P-Wing in uh, level nine. So this level Mitch is on too. Um, also a couple of clip potentials, but it's um, really, really difficult to get. Um, you could change some of the routing in this level by clipping through corners, but it's not very reliable and trying it over and over again would end up losing time. So it's best to just try it once or twice. Yeah, it's almost surely gonna lose time in a, in a race, um, unless you're really grinding it out for, for good luck and stuff. But now we will go. We we will have to go back and play that fort that was skipped with the the cloud, right? We're just doing it in a different. Right. It's order. just so that you can use your P wing to also give you a leaf in the next level, because the P wing is necessary because you can't build the P speed in uh in the le the level after the fort. There's not enough room. Yeah. So you use a P wing to have it already, and then you have the leaf still to go back into your fort. Yeah, because once you beat a level with the P wing, you don't have the infinite P speed anymore, but you still do have the rack. But you still have a leaf. Haxer lost his uh, hammer suit. Oof, that's a, that's a tough loss. Um, it takes quite a few seconds to pick up that hammer suit. And uh, luckily when you lose it here, you can switch back to the fire strats and uh, most people are pretty comfortable with that. But the, the hammer suit would have really saved some time on the boss and uh, made up for the time he lost to pick it up. Pretty much with the hammer suit, if you were to throw a hammer uh, on Boom Boom, it, it kind of acts like the same kill with the star. Right. Just overflowing the HP. 
And uh, this port, 7-2, is, is most people's least favorite when they are picking up like a randomizer or something and they're, they're getting tossed into this early in the game. It's a very difficult piece speed strategy. And, uh, Ooh, I like Haxer. that strap from Haxor. Haxor's just doing it incredibly right now. Yeah, jumping right into that and then sniping that fire, or yeah, fire flower, piranha plant with the fire flower just as he's about to enter that pipe instead of having to wait for it or do a higher jump. Yeah, he uh, he struggled a little bit with the fast part of doing the, the last room, but he, he made up some time there, especially since Mitch took two hits doing that level. So can we mention what Stewie Cartman is trying here uh, is a really difficult clip through that pipe that's like sub-pixel perfect, frame perfect, position perfect. Yeah, uh, and, but it would have skipped basically the whole level. speed perfect. Yeah. You have to have the max speed basically possible and, um, well, almost. And uh, you have to be going down at almost a perfect downward diagonal and uh, you can go into a pipe um, from the top and you'll just slide straight through it all the way to the end of the game or to the end of the level. Wow. <laughs> a lot to take in, huh? Yeah, it's a lot to take in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're in uh, the World 7 airship. This is actually the longest airship in the game, I believe. It's like Distance-wise, yeah. Distance. And it, it doesn't move as, it's as slowly as World 4, but it's also one of the slowest moving. Stewie getting that first clip on the upper uh, right part of your screen, and now he has to go, he has to get this next clip. He, got he did. It. Oh, go. He is actually stuck there if he uh, doesn't clip more. <laughs> and uh, I'm surprised to see him skipping the flower. There is a flower there that he just passed. Um, actually, I think oh, there's another one here, so okay. If you got any donations, feel free to read them. I do. We've got $9 from Freddy Jarva. $1 for every hand I'm expecting to see. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> in this, hand, in this uh, run, the hands aren't going to be as big RNG. I think you've heard during the interview, but uh, every they're going to have to play all the hands no matter what. But there is still a small element of RNG because the hand physically reaching out to grab them takes more time than them just clicking into the level. You can never avoid the hand RNG. Yep, no matter what run you're in. We've got a $25 donation from Cartridge Blowers. Hi, <laughs> it's me, the host. $25 in support of the Haxer. Is it wrong for the host to play favorites? I'll allow it. Thanks, Cardi B. <laughs> All right, well, if you love auto scrollers, well, Get ready for World 8. There's plenty of them for you. <laughs> oh, man, all right, let's go. Just because they're auto scrollers, though, doesn't mean they're free. Yeah, we're going to be seeing some lag reduction in 8, right, uh, for the 8 auto scrolls, because there's yeah. so many things shooting at you, bombs and cannonballs. And Especially in that first level. Um, yeah. The first level has a lot of small ways to manipulate your lag to get a little bit of an advantage. Um, and some of it looks really dangerous. Yeah. And... So we're going to see Always that old school potential. trick where they're doing constant bounce combos off of all the bombs and things, right? <laughs> yeah. Remember that old task and, you know, get all the one-ups and stuff? Like, I mean, it's been how many years? It should be easy now. Yeah, I mean, everyone should have just practiced that. Yeah. Jeez. Now, for, for the most part, you can just uh, kind of stay at the front of these. Most people don't want to do this, but it's because uh, it looks so dangerous. But if you kind of know, you can just kind of sit in the front and jump over everything that's about to hit you. Because uh, in the screen wrap, things don't hit you. You can kind of notice, too, there's a slight slight gap while they're, like, towards the right side of the screen. Um, so even if there are, like, objects coming at them right away, it's not going to really take into effect until it's fully into the screen. Right. We'll see, actually, we'll actually see that, like, later, like, towards the end of the run. In the other tank level, it's even more simple. There's uh, literally a strat where you just stand at the very front and you just kind of tap A and mash fire. Mitch kind of toyed around with that leaf block. Uh, I don't think that's what he wants, though. Yes, this is Bowser's entire armada. Here. Like, <laughs> be nice. <laughs> They're really trying. It's like he's just sending the whole cavalry right at you. It's weird that he sent them like one at a time at this point. He's uh, he's like, all right, I've got tanks, then I got a boat, and then I've got an air air force. Should we surround him? No, just line up one by one. Yeah, one at a time, just like most movies. <laughs> yeah. 
probably imagine how much money like Bowser has to like to have all these troops. I wonder if they're well paid. I hope so. I mean, good mushroom coins. Or Do they have insurance? Probably not. Oh. <laughs> I got I got Mitch got. Rankless. He got wrangless, which means there was no boomerang. So when the, a boomerang is thrown in that level. Um, the boomerang has to go off screen before the level will finish. And because he killed it so fast, there was actually a faster box that was spawned. Yeah, we see Haxor had to kind of have the, the boomerang on the screen. That's an interesting time save. It's one of the very smallest ways you can save time in these auto scrollers. Yeah, but any little bit helps because yes. if you know if you can nail that one speed strat in an auto scroller, your head bounces a little bit. Yeah, right now Mitch and the Haxor are still in the same level, and there are still some some complicated levels coming up where time is is savable. And uh, I think Haxor might be down items because of the uh, star he had to use in World 5 to get his fi Fire Flower back. So he may ha not have the comfort strats that um, Mitch is able to use in some of the levels. Now, is, are they, they're close enough, Mitch and Haxor, right now that we might actually see a, a switch up because of hand RNG. Is that, I mean... Hand RNG could, could potentially even it out, I think. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think it can quite pull him ahead, but it's, uh, it is a factor that we can be looking at. Seen some boat swag from Mitch here. <laughs> yeah, these auto scrolls become so mundane that people have to find all sorts of ways to entertain themselves. Just like bouncing under like a divot is great fun compared to standing still. You know, here's something I always thought interesting as a kid. Like, since we're in like the dark world, doesn't that water look like lava to you though? Like, how is the boat still like? In effect, I always thought it was more of a brown than a lava, which I don't know if I like what that implies, but it's chocolate milk. It's chocolate milk. <laughs> Anyways, we did see the one hand grab from Mitch there. Yep. Let's see if Haxer's gonna enter the level. Haxer did Thanks. get to enter. He's got the faster entry. Oh man, we might actually see some some evening out here if uh, Mitch gets another hand. These are very short levels, though, these these hand levels. Yeah, this, this was to kind of give you a nice little inventory boost before you fought Bowser and did some of these hard last levels. Ooh, the hacks are getting grabbed. Mitch gets oh. all three. Oh, wow. all three. That's, that's pretty unlucky. <laughs> no wrangless for us, do we? Nice jump for Mitch going over that barrier uh, with those fish. He can actually, there's it doesn't exist up above the screen there, so you can just jump right over it. Yeah. <laughs> and Five out of back. six. <laughs> Give him a hand. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. <laughs> so Mitch on this really scary uh, airship right now. This one was always the toughest one for me when I was a kid. Yeah, I'm surprised he's not just pee-winging over it, you know? That's what everyone else does, right? Right? All of us? I may have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, uh, it's, uh, it's a... It's a very fast-moving auto-scroller comparatively to every other one in the game. And I think that Nintendo actually put it in the top, like, hardest levels that they've created of all time. Especially for, like, the, the time that they put it in. Yeah, I really think about that. This was... But 88, 89, tough level. 88 for Japan, like 90 for USA. We didn't have speed running back in those days. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, maybe we did, because we're going to get to see the, uh, coming up in the castle, the little clip from Nintendo Power that True. they mentioned. But that's not, that's not yet. we got to get through the dark world first. All right, so Mitch is opting to use the star in 8-1. Yeah, and this is one of those safety or comfort stars, as I was talking about. It's uh, it's not really faster to use that than to just shoot fire, but um, it makes you a lot more less likely to get hit on some of those early things. Yeah, just a few bonks there, made him lose P speed. That was actually some really good rerouting on the fly. Um, you see Haxer getting it wow, perfect over nice there. Nice job, Haxer. That, that was really good. That's absurdly good. Especially getting that slide underneath that one tile gap again, because right. you really have to be precise to maintain it. And he did not have his safety star that um, that Mitch used. Well, so here comes Mitch looking out for this uh, angry sun. 
And yeah, he got the jump, right? I don't think it's <laughs> nope, not going to hit him. Strange loss of P-Speed there. I don't actually know why he lost it running across the ground at the end there. Uh, Hacks are having a little, little trouble with the hill. This is going to be okay, though, because the fort has a, a flower right where Mitch is passing right now. And that's what he's going to pick up, and it won't, it won't be too big. Now, this is another one of those kind of oddly non-linear levels where you're going through a lot of doors and kind of going up and down and stuff. Right. You go through different doors, and they each take you back to the last room you were in, and you have to go basically across two levels in segments. <laughs> nice, the first nice. try. One cycle, yeah, and one he cycle, got the he got the slide under for like some uh, some extra speed because otherwise you have to wait on the conveyor belt for a really long time. Yeah, he saved himself a little bit of movement space. Ooh, just over jumping it on Haxer's part. Yeah, so if you do miss that the first cycle, uh, like Haxor, you can actually go and just get the P switch from this box the way you're supposed to. Yeah, and there's a really cool clip you can do the hacks are going for here. Yep. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, if you're halfway through a door, you just spawn halfway through the, into the wall on the other side, and you just start clipping. <laughs> That's amazing. Nice job. <laughs> That's impressive. That was wild. <laughs> Here we are in the super tank for Mitch. Uh, he's just standing on the right, just shooting. Nothing's like really in the way for him. This is the, uh, what is it? The day one affiliate Oglib super strat or something? Uh, <laughs> patented? Uh, we totally botched it. I'm just <laughs> with a vengeance, I, I just know that much. With a vengeance. <laughs> it had to be with a vengeance. Glib is just shaking his head right now. But. At least he got his name in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're pretty much in the home stretch of the run here. So if you got any more uh, donations, feel free to read. Sure thing. We have got $100 from Otto Scroller, who says, I love SMB3 levels, but I hate the levels that, like, move on their own, whatever that's called. <laughs> $25 from Suraya who says, $25 in support of Mitch to balance out the host bias. Oh, all right. There we go. You're still killing Called out. cartridge blowers. Thanks, I guess. <laughs> um, we've got $5 from John Otto. Can we get some Stewie hype? <laughs> Stewie, what a clip. And uh, Mitch is actually coming in here on the final boss fight pretty soon, so... Uh, the time will be for Mitch when he enters the door. Right, as soon as the door goes to the princess's room. And Basically it's just mash fire. fire into this guy's head. Oh no, Mitch, look out. You're gonna get crushed by Bowser. <laughs> Something a lot of people don't know is that Bowser actually doesn't have a hitbox in his lower half. You don't say. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh the oh. swag! Oh my. Wow, such a close race. Time coming up for Mitch. Time for, time. Time. Time for Mitch. Nice job. Very nice job. Yeah, that was a great job. Here goes Haxor into the Bowser fight. So that was incredibly close, too. Hax, there's only one Bowser fight behind, which is not a, a long fight in this category. It's... Yeah, all these racers are so close, but you've seen they've all taken different bumps in the road. Mm -hmm. They've had different ups and downs and gotten different tricks or not gotten different tricks, and they all wind up about the same, and it, it just speaks so much to their improvisational strength and, right. and the really hardcore routing that's been done with this Time game. for hacks, sir. Absolutely wild. It was so cool. Wow. Um, there were some swings in there. Wow. Not that's, just like one person in the lead the whole time. That was pretty good. Yeah, that's what's that? Less than a minute. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah, less than a minute apart from Haxor and Mitch. That's incredible. Yeah, and uh, like a world record run for this is in the 110s right now. Um, the 109 is what what is be being gone for. So just losing two minutes in a race is absolutely crazy. Uh, and they are getting so consistent that we're seeing this all the time now. I love the camaraderie in the in, in the community. You guys are always talking about different strats and helping each other out and encouraging each other. Oh yeah, everyone just wants to see the game get better. All right, so now we see Stewie approaching the final boom boom. The final boom boom. <laughs> That's what the Stewie got. He got it. He killed that boom boom in a fantastic way. 
Last level. Bring it home, Stewie. You got this, bud. Oh, he went for the clip, but he didn't get it. Saves a little bit of time. Oh, he's gonna keep going for it. it. You guys will see this. Let's go. Come on, get this clip. Stewie, Stewie. There he goes! All right. That's a clip you basically only see in any percent. Gotta get that old, yeah, the, that's the clip that Nintendo Power told you about. Thanks, Nintendo Power. I love that there's just like a slight bug in their game. They're like, no, it's a, <laughs> it's a secret. We hid it in here for you. <laughs> go. Right, go. Here's here the go. Bowser fight. Time coming up for Stewie on the door. Mash him right into his face. There we and go. there he goes. Bowser's down. Yeah. Everyone saved the princess. She was saved across all realities. Such, an, such a tight race. I am blown away by the skill and, and consistency of all these guys. That was amazing. Yeah, that's great, absolutely great job. Time for Stewie. Time. <laughs> Look at these guys just talking it up. Yeah, like they're just they're... like, they just want to talk about their runs because they were so focused on their own. Yeah. Now they get to brag and tell each other what happened. They're so excited. So our winner today, MFP. Yeah. Mitch. Mitch, give the give the crowd a uh, wave. He's too busy being Oh, friends. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. He, he's realized we're cheering for him. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, thanks, uh, thanks yeah. everybody for coming out for the Mario 3 100% race. Uh, I hope all the people who are watching had a great time. I hope the runners felt good about this. And I'm here on the couch, I think we can all agree this was a great time. I, good job. I definitely enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks, guys. Give it up one more time for that incredible couch to Mitch Flower Power, The Haxer, and Stewie Cartman. That, that was thrilling, that was exhilarating, that was great. Send you a couple more donations here. We have had a lot of $5 donations on that $5 train that came into the station. Oh, let me give you an ad first.
Hello, everybody. Kung Fu Fruit Cup here, stepping on in. Very, very excited. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Very excited for Gymnast's upcoming Skyward Sword run. It's going to be amazing. We had a great time chatting earlier, so I can't wait to see the run. In the meantime, we're going to read a few donations for you all. Did... All right, let's get a quick donation in here. I'm not sure if you all heard, but we have a $1,000 donation from Beer in Heaven. Thank you so much, my goodness. All right, we will take a quick break. We'll be right back and get some more donations in. Hey, Omnigamer here, and my book Speedrun Science is the complete guide to speedrunning's process, history, philosophy, and so much more. Check it out at fangamer.com. All right, let's get a few more donations in. We have a $25 donation from Utmost Timaeus, who said, I heard something early about a choo-choo train, so I'll do my part as well as four others. Another $25 donation if the host can pronounce my name close enough. Well, hopefully I did an okay job, because we are actually very close to that $100,000 mark. I said, let's, let's get this, everyone. Let's make this happen. Yes. For example, we have a $5 donation from Edge C who says, donate train to 100K hype. <laughs> and a $25 donation from a Chlorian, a Chlorin, who says, did I hear there was a donation train? Here's for a few others who can't afford it this year. Choo choo. All right, we have a wonderful interview. Let's throw it over to, I believe, Kizaron. All right, Kizaron, take it away. Don't you worry, Miss Kung Fu Fruit Cup, it is indeed Kizaron. You would have looked silly if you were Wong, huh? Anyway, yes, I am Kizaron. For this interview, I'm gonna stick with Steven, though, and I'm joined by both Jim and Erica from PCF. How are you two doing? Doing wonderful. Great, thanks for having us. So I'm always both excited and nervous to be a part of these interviews. Uh, before I ask you two a couple of questions, more than a couple, um, I personally have been super grateful to the Prevent Cancer Foundation because if it weren't for their resources, then I wouldn't have found out that I had testicular cancer. So this is always something that I'm always like really excited to talk about, always you know, really excited to talk about the good you guys do, which a lot of people may not necessarily know what their dollars go to, and this is just like a great opportunity to both educate everyone and, you know, show a couple of faces of the organization. So let's start with you, Jim. So you are listed as the scientific director. Would you like to go into a little detail about what you specifically do for PCF? Yeah, um, it's a great honor for me to be associated with the foundation. I'm an academic. I was at the NIH for 25 years doing cancer research and then moved on. And I'm at uh, Rush University in Chicago, where I've been for the last 15 years doing a variety of research and research administrative type tasks. Um, at the foundation, I've been on the board for a number of years because I've been involved with early detection research, which is a big focus of what the foundation does. And it's the only cancer foundation dedicated exclusively to prevention. 
and early detection, mm -hmm. which we think is really important because we want to nip cancer before it causes all the problems that we are all too familiar with. And these are dreadful things that are wonderful to avoid. Mm -hmm. So the Prevent Cancer Foundation, the 35 years of its existence, it started in Alexandria, Virginia, has a national scope, has been to raise $150 million of funding to support faculty, early faculty development to get people into the field, and it's been incredibly successful in that regard, and then grants to do the first step to get the preliminary data to get a full support from the um, National Cancer Institute or some other major agency to really bring an idea from concept to implementation. And it's done that in a very sustained way. Its focus has been national. Through the dialogue with your colleagues here at Awesome Games, it said, you, your colleagues said, well, can we do this internationally? Because our scope is international. Our, our client base is international. Mm -hmm. And we've never had the resources to, to do that before, but through this kind of fundraising, we've had the ability over the last several years to start a number of initiatives across the world. And I hope everybody can get access to the presentations that were earlier today that outline what is happening now because of your funding in Peru with cervical cancer that we heard from, from Nima, doing work with her Duke colleagues in terms of trying to bring early detection of cervical cancer to Peru where it's a major medical problem. Right. So that was very exciting. In addition, we had colleagues from Sloan Kettering talk about their activities in collaboration with, with physicians and other health uh, workers in Nigeria, bringing early colon cancer detection to Nigeria in some very innovative, culturally sensitive kind of ways. This stuff just wasn't happening. And so your funding created the impetus that we could support these very, very talented professionals to get engaged with the people from these countries to bring in culturally sensitive, sensitive prevention solutions to places where there's a lot of health hardship. And that's really amazing to hear. Like, you guys don't realize the impact that your dollars have to both just helping grow the organization further and then potentially saving thousands upon thousands of lives. Now, Erica, we kind of simplify a little bit like what your title is. We have you as director of grants. Sure. So um, you, you definitely cover like a little more of a scope than that, but would you like to go into detail about like what you kind of sure. get into? Sure. I have the fortunate position of managing our grants program, our community grants um, across the U.S., along with our global grants that Jim was just referring to. And I do evaluation of outreach of those programs to so see the application process through, the implementation of the projects, and the reporting afterwards. And all of this, as Jim alluded to, is made possible by this amazing community. We've been able to um, launch multiple global grants, along with the money that is raised through this um, event each year really impacts everything that we do. It's, I've been with the foundation for 15 years, and it's been amazing to see the growth of this community and this event, as well as the growth of the foundation and what we can do in terms of little communities across the U.S. to resource um, low-resource countries across the globe and how we can really make a difference in cancer prevention and early detection. Yeah, yeah. Now, you, you mentioned um, there was a panel that you guys did here on site. Um, would you like to kind of talk about, because we, we don't, I don't specifically know when the panel is going to be available, but we can kind of tell everyone at home what you guys were talking about and get that information out now. Yes, so. yes. So th the first presentation that we talked about was from the uh, early detection program in Nigeria. And they're doing a study that's never been done in a serious, you know, uh, rigorous kind of way to look at the success of bringing uh, fecal testing that can be done in the home into application in Nigeria, where it's a somewhat less organized uh, health system than we have, and, and to see if that's really working, where it's working, where it's missing things, where it's overcalling things. Um, the analysis uh, has just been completed based upon funding received last year from Awesome Games. And uh, they're putting it in the hands of the statisticians to go through the, uh, the uh, 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 analysis of the, of the raw data to come up with 
policy level uh, conclusions about how they should proceed in bringing this, this, this program across uh, more of Nigeria, where there's enormous unmet need. They did this study and they were able to do it quickly because the area that they're talking about, which is a relatively small geographic area, is the population of 50 million Africans. And so there's just enormous unmet need in terms of colon cancer. So this is very, very strategically impactful work. And it's always cool to hear, like there's kind of like a symbiotic relationship between Games Done Quick and the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Mm -hmm. Both organizations have grown basically side by side when these events are going on. And it's just really awesome. Like you mentioned, you've seen, you've personally seen the growth of both organizations yeah. at the same time. And it's just always awesome to be a part of helping raise money for what's just this incredible global phenomenon at this point in time. Yeah. I am going to ask you guys one lighthearted question, and then we're going to go ahead and throw it back up to, I believe it's Kung Fu Fruit Cup. <laughs> so what's the last game you guys played? Easy for me, Mario Kart. Um, I, at Good home, choice. Yes, with uh, my boys, they totally smoke me, but I, <laughs> I try my best to keep up, and maybe I can pick up some tips. Uh, this week, actually, that'd be really great if I could go home and yeah, let's 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 get let's get Erica some help here. And you, Jim? Hi, oh, hey, there you go. <laughs> so this is true confession, and um, it was just teed off by the last session. I think the last game I actually played was Mario Brothers. But Very it, good. It, Twenty-five years? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fine. We're, we're all doing great work together. So I want to once again thank Jim and Erica for being a part of this and. I'm Steven, and thank you for spending your time with us, and take it away, Kung Fu. Thank you, Steven. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> well, thanks, Steven. <laughs> Always good to learn more about the causes that Games on Quick supports. So that was a wonderful, wonderful interview. Before the run starts, let's get in a few more donations. We have a $10 donation from Snowy the Griff, who says, I started watching GDQ last year, and I found a newfound love for speedrunning. Glad I managed to catch SMB3, and really excited to see Gymnast86 take on Skyward Sword tonight. My mom passed from cancer almost five years ago, so I'm happy to give a donation to such a good cause. Also, honk! Best file name, just saying. We also have a $25 donation from Katie Lou who says $5 honk train. Let's steal cancer's keys and lock it out of the garden. That's a great reference. <laughs> All right, we just hit the $100,000. Mark, that's amazing. You guys caught it before I did. My goodness. Let's keep this up, everybody. Let's keep it up. Keep it going. This is wonderful. To celebrate with that, we have a $25 donation from, from Gore Wooken, who says, let's go, first day 100K hype! <laughs> we also have a $50 donation from Anonymous, who says, gotta donate to my favorite game. And it helps that we are about to see the run be halved from the last Skyward Sword run. That's right, it's gonna be pretty amazing. We have another $50 donation from Will of the Whisper who says 100,000 hype. You guys ready to hype again? Because we have another $50 donation from Midas T, who says, could not just sit here and watch, had to get on the train. Here was a little something to help in the fight against cancer. 100,000 hype!
Let's get in a few more donations before we get started. We have a $50 donation from the Dave, who says, oh boy, donation time. Have money, I didn't want it anyway. We have $25 from Laser Fist, who says, first time donating, and so happy that I can give to such an amazing cause. Congrats on 10 years. We have a $10 donation from Moose Moose, who says, honk. <laughs> We also have a $10 donation from